The owners' meetings wrap up in Arlington, Texas. And on everybody's mind, relocation of the Oakland A's. You are Locked On A's, your daily Oakland A's podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, there you are. Welcome back. If you have been here before, if you haven't, well, then welcome. Come on in. This is Locked on A's, your daily podcast centering on all things Oakland athletics, your team every day. And I'm Wayne Coy, your host, A's fan for my entire life and sure happy to be here, even on the darkest of days, which uh, today, there's no way around it. It's a very emotional day today because of the fact that uh, Major League Baseball owners got together and made a decision. What it was, was it what you expected? Well, we'll get into that in just a second. I do need to let you know that today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. I need to let you know because they got a great deal for you, which is this. You put down a $5 bet if you're a new customer, money line bet. Just pick a team that you think is going to win. And if your team wins, you get, for your $5 bet, a $150 bonus bet. Actually, bonus bets. You can have a bank of $150. You can bet any amount that you want. All you got to do is win that $5 bet. That's how easy it is. Download the app. Takes you no time at all. FanDuel, they want you to have some fun with them. FanDuel.com slash locked on, and that'll get you started and to give you all the details that you need from our friends at FanDuel. Okay. So, yes, today, very, very busy. Let's go right to it. Arlington, Texas, owners' meetings. Day three and the day of decision for the Oakland A's and relocation. There was an effort over more than a decade uh, to find a stadium solution in Oakland. It was John Fisher's preference. It was my preference. As a matter of fact, the first trip I made after I was elected commissioner was to Oakland uh, to talk to John about trying to get something done there. Um, it didn't happen. We, you know, a lot of back and forth, but it, the fact of the matter is that there, there was never a deal in Oakland. Um, when it became clear um, that there was an opportunity to move to Las Vegas, uh, we appointed a relocation committee. I want to thank Mark Antanasio, John Sherman, and John Middleton. I don't think in my time in baseball there has ever been an owner committee that spent more hours in a relatively discreet period of time than this relocation committee. There was no aspect of um, this issue that was left unturned, including what the Oakland opportunity was, what the Las Vegas opportunity was, how we ended up here, and what Las Vegas was going to do for Major League Baseball. I just, again, have to thank them for the time and effort that they put in. Um, the relocation committee um, made a set of um, recommendations to me. I adopted those recommendations um, without change. We took those recommendations to the executive council. They unanimously voted in favor uh, of the relocation. And then today we had a 30 club vote, which was also unanimous in favor of the rec recommendation. I know, I know this is a terrible day for fans in Oakland. That is, I understand that, and that's why we've all would ha had a policy of doing everything humanly possible to avoid a relocation, and I truly believe we did that in this case. I think it's beyond debate that the status quo in Oakland was untenable. Those of you who have been in the building understand what I'm talking about, and I absolutely am convinced that there was not a viable path forward in Oakland. Um, we look forward 
to being in Las Vegas. Um, tremendous support locally um, for having the A's there. Um, and we do believe over the long haul, Las Vegas will be a great asset to Major League Baseball. Um, I'd like to ask John Fisher to come up and say a few words, and then I'll finish up. Hello, everybody. Um, as Rob said, uh, today is an incredibly difficult day for Oakland A's fans. Um, it's a great day for Las Vegas. Um, I, I want to thank uh, the commissioner who is tireless in his uh, and his team's efforts to try and find a solution here and to work closely with us and with the uh, uh, Oakland and Las Vegas communities um, to try and find a solution for a new stadium for the A's, which has always been uh, our goal. Um, I want to thank in Nevada the, the governor, Joe Lombardo, um, who is also tireless in his efforts to make this work, um, Leader Canizaro, Speaker Yeager, uh, and the Clark County Commission in particular with uh, Chairman Jim Gibson. Um, I understand this is an incredibly difficult day for Oakland fans, um, and uh, I just want to say we, we have every effort and did everything we could to try and find a solution there. Um, and it was only in the last couple of years that we began to turn our attention to another market, that being Las Vegas. Um, I'm very excited about the opportunity in Vegas. The fans there are terrific. Um, the success of the Raiders and the Golden Knights has shown, as well as our own AAA team, the Aviators, has shown uh, just how successful professional sports can be in that market. And we really look forward to opening day in, in 2028 and bringing some of the success of the historical success of the athletics to Las Vegas. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> so there's a lot to unpack right there, of course. That is uh, Commissioner Rob Manfred and um, a very rare public sighting and even rarer uh, hearing the man speak, John Fisher, owner of the A's, who, uh, as far as I'm concerned, what you just heard there was you heard from a liar and then an even bigger liar. And I'm going to pull up just shy of the devil incarnate. OK, uh, not even going to hide my distaste for the man and everything that he's done to Athletics Nation, to the city of Oakland, to the community of the East Bay uh, and to a multi-generational heirloom that is the Oakland A's. I, I, I find it funny, too, that they're like, well, uh, this place just wasn't tenable. Uh, we couldn't play there. It was out of hand. But could you please extend our lease a couple more years? Okay. It's in disrepair because you allowed it to be. Okay. Um, the experience is the way it is because you make it that way. And you don't put any of the money you make, including your revenue share, back into the product the team itself. Every time the players get good, they're either traded as soon as they're due a paycheck or they become free agents and walk. It's the Oakland A's way. Churn it, churn it, churn it. I'm going to get into that some more in just a minute right now, though, on a much happier note. I've got to tell you about FanDuel, everything that they're up to, which is basically giving you an opportunity uh, to be a winner. Check this out. A $5 bet. It's a money line bet now with FanDuel. So you can bet the spread, but in this case, you're just picking the team that you think is going to win. If your team wins, and it's a $5 bet, you get $150 in bonus bets from our friends at FanDuel. They want you to be part of that action. It's National Football League time. What a great way to really get into the game. Give yourself some rooting interest. Enjoy it. Maybe you go against friends. You can do all that with the FanDuel app. You can bet, of course, the overs, the unders, the player props, the money line. Uh, my dog in the other room, whatever you want to bet on, you can do it at FanDuel. Get to FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started and take advantage of that great deal. And the other thing I want to make sure that you know about is uh, Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. Yeah, Locked On Sports Today is here for you. It's 24-7, covers all the top sports stories in all the different sports. Local experts, 
uh, people who really know what they're talking about on Locked On, plus national shows that cover every single league. Go to Locked On Sports today on YouTube and subscribe. Make sure you do that to the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel. Kind of proud of that, Locked On Sports. All right. Well, it was uh, certainly a crazy day today. My phone was blowing up. It was the tweets. It was the the uh, the emails. It was people wanting me to spend some time talking with them about the A's because they know how I'm wired. They know that deep down, I bleed green and gold and have my entire life almost since I was seven and three quarters. Thank you very much. So I spent some time with ESPN Radio. Yeah, Cofield and Company. There they are right there. Cofield and Company, uh, who you'll find at 1100 AM and also on FM at 100.9 whenever you're in Las Vegas. So, uh, of course, what do they want to talk about? Well, they want to talk about they want to talk about odds. No, they want to talk about the A's, of course. And we did for Vegas. Major League Sports in the form of MLB is most likely coming to Las Vegas. Um, it is a heartbreaking day for Oakland. I don't think there's any turning back now. Uh, the last chance to block this thing was some plucky owners saying, no, no, we're not letting you move without a relocation fee, but that didn't happen. Wayne Coy covers this stuff uh, pretty much every day. Lock it on A's podcast. I commend you for covering this organization. It's been really frustrating for years now. So how are you feeling today? Oh, pretty good. Therapy is usually at about five o'clock, so I'll be on time for my appointment again today, like always, Steve. All right. Well, how do you think Oakland is feeling? Uh, I know you're joking around a little bit there. This is it's um this kicked, feels kicked like in the, the end. kicked in the and, ball. And, and, and That's and, the answer. Yep. Kicked right in the yep. gonads. That's how we feel today. So why did this happen? Um, because we have the absolute worst owner in the history of sports, and um he's proven that now for about 15 years. And it's only gotten worse and worse and worse. And the fans finally said, look. You know, it's sort of like being in a uh, abusive relationship when somebody keeps threatening to hit you. In this case, threatening to move the team, move the team, move the team. You hear that all the time, and then you strip the team down to the studs where there's nothing left on the field to be excited about. You double season ticket prices. Uh, basically, where you end up is where we are right now with an owner saying, well, see, nobody came and supported the team. So I guess we yeah. need to go someplace else. And we already know what happened with the legislature here in Nevada. They basically rammed this thing through without any sort of uh, vetting process whatsoever. And today was no exception, Steve. The owners did the same thing. In fact, uh, there were six or seven owners that were literally discussing a no vote. Unfortunately, the leader of that group passed away on Tuesday. He was the owner of the San Diego Padres. Um, but what really happened was the commissioner rallied the troops and said, look, We've got the absolute worst PR campaign ever potentially going into a brand new market that our league has ever endured. I need everybody in this room to promise that they're going to be on the same page. So that's why you got a unanimous vote, because as you know, nothing in this world is unanimous. OK, it's it's ridiculous that all 30 of them would be in lockstep, but they have to be because what else are you going to do at this point? They've pretty much worn out their welcome in Oakland. Um, Fisher needs to sell the team. He's not going to do that. And now here in Las Vegas, we all get to endure what I had to endure the entire time I lived in the Bay Area, which is absolute inept ownership. This guy's an idiot, and you're going to find it out in short order. And I'll be surprised if the stadium gets built like we all think it's going to get built, where it's supposed to get built. Yep. And the other thing is, so you, mentioned, you mentioned no, uh, you know, that everything's pretty much a foregone conclusion, but don't forget. And this is important. This vote for the stadium funds of $380 million in public funding, that, that did not come from the public. It came from the legislature who did it without asking the public what they thought. At that time, if you recall, Steve, the, the, uh, the sentiment was about running at about 80% against in terms of, you know, use that money for education. Lord knows we need it. Instead, this thing just got pushed through from the governor. And now what this group is trying to do, and I'm talking about Schools over stadiums, the teachers union, they want to get this thing on the ballot in uh, November of 2024. And that's the goal. And if that happens and the public does get an opportunity to vote, I'll tell you right now, I'll bet you everything I've got that this thing fails in a general election. It'll happen. And then when that happens, 
Mr. Fisher is going to have to figure out how to cover almost $400 million that he definitely doesn't have. He's billionaire broke as it is. Wayne Corey with his Locked On A's podcast. So, Wayne, my question was, is there any shot that Fisher just changes in that this was all work to get it here to Las Vegas? But once they're here, winning product, here we come. Well, you know, part of the uh, the agreement today was a clause and I do commend MLB's owners for putting this in. It's one thing to say all 30 of us are going to vote the same way to save face and, you know, get back some sort of, uh, you know, decent goodwill within the, the community of sports fans. But it's another thing to cover your butt. And that's exactly what they did, because anybody who knows business knows that this is a classic pump and dump. You, you bring the team here, you get them established. You might even spend some money on payroll for a change. Maybe you get a decent product on the field. Fisher gets about a five times return on his investment immediately. And so what they did was they put in a clause saying you aren't allowed to do that. And if you do do that, then you've got to pay an exorbitant tax, which then gets divided amongst the other owners. That right there is enough. It's basically an expansion fee, for lack of a better word. It's ipso facto an, an insurance policy to make sure that the owners who are all holding their nose and looking at the other, the other way because this is your stupid cousin Eddie who embarrasses you every single Thanksgiving that is now moving into Las Vegas. You live here, Steve. I live here. Who do you know that's excited about the Oakland A's? And I'm not talking about Major League Baseball. I'm not talking about a new stadium. I'm talking about this team in particular and all of the crap that goes with it. Nobody. Nobody's excited. Yeah, you know, you know. I that. think very casual sports fans who haven't followed the story can still be into it. But beyond that, if you follow sports, you know who the A's have been. It is a, a stink fest uh, from the get go here. Wayne Quay's with us locked on A's. Uh, MLB votes uh, yes unanimously for the A's to move. Um, I actually don't. I don't fully believe they're coming here. I, I'm with you. I don't fully believe that it's going to be that tight. But I will tell you this: the other reason there was a unanimous vote, yes. It's, cool to be in lockstep with the, the fish, but this is also a tremendous thing to set up for the future. Vegas and Nevada gave them a lot of money, and now every stadium situation around the country sure. can use the Vegas deal to kind of threaten their state and local legislators and say, hey, you know what, we'll move. Look yeah. at what, hey, the city like Vegas gave up the money. Yeah. You better give it up or else. Yeah, you're right. And as a matter of fact, this relocation committee, and I'm, I'm using air quotes, you can't see them, but I'm using them. There was uh, three owners that were on this committee. Two of the three were basically putting a gun to the head of their communities to try to get either, in the case of Kansas City, a brand new stadium or Milwaukee. The man who ran the relocation committee, as you know, just got his bag about $500 million worth. So what do you think they thought? I mean, obviously, they all have in the back of their mind, well, what if I want to do this someday? Even though John Fisher's an idiot, I need to kind of maybe think about my future and what if I decide I want to hold up my community for more money and better luxury boxes, et cetera, et cetera, and so on. That's also in the back. So you're absolutely right. That's in the back of their minds. What I love is I mean, that the, the fan base in Oakland is not going to be quiet. They haven't been quiet since Jump Street. They're not going to shut up now. And you watch next year. They've already, they've already said opening day. They're all coming, but they're not coming into the stadium. They're going to stay in the parking lot, have the world's largest tailgate party, and 100% boycott that game. They want those seats to be completely empty on opening day. That's the first salvo shot. There's more to come, believe me. And you do believe they will play next year in Oakland? Yeah, I think I think they have a lease, so they pretty much have to. But after that, as you heard, it's, uh, it's your same uh, crazy uh, cousin who doesn't have a place to live, and he needs like two weeks on your couch and three weeks on mine. And that's the way the A's are going to be in 2025, 26 and 27. That's if shovels hit the ground when they're supposed to. There isn't any pushback after stadiums or schools over stadiums get done with the, uh, the referendum. All of that is still to come. So I don't, I'm not holding out hope that, first of all, they're going to move here. Secondly, they're going to move here and be ready to play ball by 2028, or that there's going to be a stadium where the Tropicana currently stands. I've seen this movie over and over again. Fisher gets in his own way better than anybody I've ever heard of in my life, Steve. So get ready. The You Know What show is on its way to Las Vegas. Could Oakland get an expansion team down the road? Sure. Uh, Rob Manford today was asked that exact question. And what he said was, we have a lease in 2024. Uh, I certainly don't want to have a bad relationship with the city of Oakland or the mayor. 
And he basically left the door open for, you know, for a, an expansion team, which would be a consolation prize. I know Mayor Tao, what she wants is um, to give the A's an extension, to give them the opportunity to not have to move around from place to place. She has said, we'll extend you until you, you know, need to move. But what it's going to cost you is the name, athletics or A's. It's going to be the right. team colors. It's going to be every trademark, every bit of intellectual property that has to do with this team that's been in that city for 55 years. And Manfred did say that that's up to the team. And now John Fisher said today he's bringing the A's to Las Vegas. So I think at this point, it's a non-starter. But as it gets a little later in the day, I mean, what are they going to do? They're going to play some of their games in San Francisco, some of them outdoors. Um, at Las Vegas ballpark. And you know, and I know 118 degrees in July in an open air stadium. That's, that's no bueno. So that's not going to happen. And, you know, and they've got a TV contract. Don't forget that. That means for the NBC sports Bay area to continue to give John Fisher that check, they've got to stay in the Bay area. The minute they're out of the, they're, the minute they're out of the TV market, the money goes away. And believe me, they'd be happy to stop writing those checks. They overpaid. Amazing. An amazing story. They're, they're leaving a town that's all pissed off. They're coming to a town that doesn't really feel like welcoming the A's, but uh, right. here we are. Hey, After man, this, you know, uh, it's, it's, not, it's the Vegas-born thing. I believe that if Las Vegas were to get either an expansion team or uh, the A's, John Fisher's team with a new identity, new name, new unis, new everything, I think then you got a shot because you see what's happened with the Golden Knights. And the Raiders are a different deal. That's only eight or nine games a year, and it, you know half the stadium's filled with uh, fans of the other team anyway. But I I want to see what a Wednesday night in Las Vegas looks like against the Pittsburgh Pirates in this stadium that they've already said they have to sell out every single game to make their nut. It ain't <laughs> yeah. gonna happen, Steve. It's a fairy tale. Well, William, you you bring up those other franchises though, but they do have a common thread, and it's not that they're out here in Las Vegas. It's they have owners who have been invested in those products and that have really cared and put in a lot toward winning. Like that's not really necessarily the case here, right? Like right. You know, Vegas doesn't just heal all ills and all of a sudden you're going to become a winner. Right. Oh, believe me. I know that. And Mark Davis has been, I, I think turned into a good citizen for the city. Obviously, you know, he's got the aces now as well. And you saw what he did, which he needed to do, which is make that change with uh, the head coach. And now the team looks to be, Fired back up again. But again, that's football. This is baseball. And as much as Jeremy, for the record, Aguero wants you to believe that it's the same thing, it's not. And good luck with the F1 this weekend, by the way. Yeah. Uh, he's out the Lockdown 8 podcast. We got about two minutes left. Well, um, I wanted to ask this one. I don't, I don't really know a whole lot about their media situation. You just mentioned the TV situation. They're not, they don't have a deal on terrestrial in the Bay Area, right? The uh, in terms of terrestrial television? Terrestrial TV or radio? Oh, radio. No, you know what? They were the first team to basically, and this turned into a whole thing. This is John Fisher and Dave Cavill, by the way. That's uh, that's his uh, his uh, marionette that he carries around with him. John the president. Fisher. Yep. Yeah, he's the water boy. Anyway, Dave Cavill uh, famously said, we don't need radio, meaning terrestrial radio. Um, and we're going to be the first team in Major League Baseball to do nothing but stream, and we're going to own it. And it's called A's Cast, and it's going to be great. Well, the response was fast and furious because if there is a sport that lends itself to the medium that is radio or audio, whatever you want to call it, uh, it's baseball. So in short order, they realized that they stepped in it and they had an affiliate before the season started. And they do. Yes, they do have a, uh, a flagship station, but they put most of their emphasis on their uh, their online product. And that's fine. I understand that that's the way the world's going. You know, I'm, look at me. I'm 40-year radio guy, and I'm podcasting now every day. Go figure. Uh, last couple seconds. Should we start running the A's next year at Lotus Broadcasting? You know, it's probably not a bad idea. Get the GM in there. More importantly, ask your sales department if they can sell it, because there's your answer right there. We just went silent. We're not going to ask that. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Wayne, we're up against it. We appreciate it. Thank oh, you for the information. Stay in touch, and, uh, Sorry Steve, the okay? Bay is losing, losing the team. It's a rough day, brother. It's, it's like we lost a family member, but uh, I got a feeling we're going to resuscitate him at some point. So thanks a bunch for the time, man. And I hope, hope you'll stay in touch because I'm going to reach out to you and ask you about some stuff that's going on here in town as we get along. So Cofield and company, right. thanks a lot, you guys. There you go. Wayne Coy, lock on you. 
Yeah. Oh, man. <clears throat> like I told you, range of emotion, right? Didn't start off the day that feisty, but uh, it's kind of where I'm at right now. A little pissed. Let's just be honest. I think a lot of us are, but <clears throat> just forge on. Man. That's all you can do, right? At some point, we're going to get back to talking about what's happening on the field with the players who unfortunately have had to take a back seat to all of this drama. Somebody said to me today, well, you know, let it go. Let, you, you can't let it go. It's, it's real. It, it actually exists. There's an issue there. And I would be remiss if I didn't give you as much of that reality as I could. So hope you're enjoying it. And I hope you make us your first listen every day. If you do it already, you're an every day, or did you know that? And we thank you for that. If you're brand new, welcome aboard. Comments down below. Go ahead and leave them. Uh, you know how I'm feeling, so you'll get a reply one way or the other. Hopefully it's a good one. Uh, but for sure, absolutely. Get us at Locked On A's. And uh, also a special little bonus that we get to do with uh, Sully on Locked On MLB. That will be hitting YouTube and our podcast channels as well. Everywhere you get your podcast every day, it's Locked On A's, your team, every day. My name is Wayne Coy. Till we get together again, you keep on swinging.